Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Benny, how you doing, man? I'm good, man. How are you? I am delightful. Okay. Uh, it's already July. It's already halfway through July. Oh, yeah. Remember, I was sitting there like, wow, it's already July 1st now. Like, it feels like I blinked, and now it's halfway through the month. Yeah. Every year just gets goes by quicker and quicker. Um, it's just unbelievable sometimes. Yeah, but, so, um what you've been working on, what's new? Like, I know you, you know, you've been here in this, in Sound City before I got here. Yeah. So you've had a, had a lot of experience here in the building, but like, what's, what's been going on? What's new? Like, what are the new projects? Um, what's, what are the things you're excited about right now? Um, well, I'm working on my own project. It's called Beat Tape. Yeah. That's the, that's the, I guess the most recent thing that I'm working on. And basically, it's just a collection of, um, you know, like hip hop beats. And I got a few friends that came over and rapped on it. And so I'm just trying to finish that up. Nice. Um, so that's, that's kind of been, I don't know what the, it's kind of hard to, like, it's been interesting because this is really the first time that I've worked on anything that's mine, really. Everything, wow. Yeah. Everything else has been for other artists. Yeah. So this is my first, I did put out like a little project a couple years ago, but it was just basically a bunch of songs that I produced for other artists that didn't already make the album. Gotcha. So, yeah. I, so I just, you know, made a compilation of all that stuff and just put it out. So this is the first time that I'm really like deliberately like saying, okay, I'm going to put out my own project. Hell yeah. Yeah. So that's been fun. That's been fun. So on that, did you create the beats or you put, you collected different beats or, and then you put, got your artists together and did the mix and master or are there these beats that you created or? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah yep. I made all the beats. I made everything. Um, and then again, you know, just grabbed a few friends that I know that rap pretty good. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Hey, let's, uh, you know, come over and give me 16 bars on this or 24 on this. Yeah. And, um, I mean, it's weirdly just coming to, it's like a hodgepodge of stuff, but it sounded, in fact, after this podcast, I'm going <laughs> to go over and start mixing a couple records. So, nice. Yeah. So yeah. is it a, is, are you going to put this up on Spotify, like the whole thing? Yeah. Or, nice. So yeah. is it under your name or do you have an artist name? Um, just uh, DJ B Original. Nice. And my, my indie record company is um, Sound Unity Entertainment. So it'll be, it, I guess it'll be under that. Nice. Yeah. How many tracks? Um... I'm at about 24, but because they're beats, it's not very long. Like this is a short project. It's like, like 32 minutes, 33 minutes. Like it, like literally, it's quick. It's just like one beat to the next. Some skits. I'm just trying to take people like on a little journey of like, you know, what I think. Nice. You know what I mean? Like it's not, um, it's not like this thing like in rap music, like where you have 16 bar verses, eight bar hooks, and like that sort of thing. It's not really that. So it's just like beat, 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 skit, beat, beat, beat. So it's just like, yeah. it's not full song structures. Mm -mm. Just, that's cool though. No, not at all. That's not, different. And I'm trying to like integrate everything together so that one song goes into the next and the skits all, all make sense. Yeah. And, you know, it's just really like my sensibilities. Like if you check me out on Facebook, sometimes, you know, I'm always popping shit about politics and stuff. Yeah. So, so, I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I, I have, love, I really enjoy reading your <laughs> Facebook updates. So, so, sure. so I have, so I have stuff like, you know, I have stuff that's reflect, basically that's like reflective of me. Nice. And that's why sometimes like in this project, like some of the beats would be short, like a minute and a half, some of them even 45 seconds. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. Cause you know, you work on so many other projects with your clients and now yeah. that you're able to do your own thing. There's just, you know, no rules, whatever you want to do. It's, it's pretty, it's nice when you get to do that. It's very freeing, very like oh, yeah. just super creative and artistic with it. Some, some of the other artists I work, like all the other artists I work with, um, everyone's pretty much like either taking a break, a couple guys are on tour, like, you know, it's just a, it's just like a slow moment. So yeah, I mean, it's, a lot of, you know, a lot of artists are touring right now. Same with, um, you know, so a lot of my clients and artists, they're, they're off and doing their festivals and mm -hmm. summer stuff. Um, so yeah, this time of the year for me, gets a little slow, but it's nice. Cause, um, the beginning, like the first quarter was insane. And now I'm like, you know, huge peak and now it's coming down a little bit, but I'm, I'm kind of glad because I needed a little break yeah. to like, just kind of, you know, take it easy and work on some other things, some personal, personal projects of mine. But, um, 
yeah, man, like everyone, a lot of people are out on tour. Yeah, for sure. Right now. For sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What are some new artists like that you've been listening to lately, like bands in the hip hop, R&B, rap genres that, that you're really excited about? Because like, that's not really my world. There's stuff that I like, but I'm just curious, mm -hmm. you know, what, what are you thinking right now? Like some of the bigger emerging artists are. Um, well, rap music is going through like a pretty heavy transition. It has been, this has been happening over the last few years where you're having a lot of not, I don't want to say not good rap. It's just changing. And it's changing so quickly because the younger generation is really kind of doing their own thing. Yeah. So for a guy like me, who's like sort of a purist, I'm not really into the new music that much, even though I like that these guys are just coming out of nowhere and they're just creating their own thing. I think it's kind of cool. Yeah. You know, I do think, it's, even though I'm not a huge, huge fan of their music, um, I do like what they're doing. I do like that they're like, you know what? Fuck these record companies. I'm just going to put the record out myself. Right. You know, I'm just going to do what I want to do. I don't care about song structure. Like some of the stuff isn't even mixed good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like literally, like they're just grabbing beats off YouTube or whatever. So in that respect, it's kind of interesting. But the flip side of that is that the music is, the quality of the music is really bad. Yeah. Really bad. What do you think about, I don't even know if it's still in or whatever, but I do remember like that new thing that started like the, the mumble rap kind of stuff. Like, is that, yeah. what do you think about that? Like that direction of it? Like, did you, did you not like it? Did you enjoy it? Cause there's some of the stuff that I just didn't, I couldn't really grasp. Yeah. But then I, then after like listening to it a little bit more, I kind of, like I realized why people liked it, but I don't know. I'm pretty open-minded with most music, but yeah, it's just mm -hmm. like, um, what do you think about that I, stuff? I do like the energy of it. Yeah. But again, the music, I just don't think the music is that great. But, dude, I love to see these kids, like, go to these festivals. They're, like, 17, 18 years old. They got the crowd going crazy and all that kind of stuff. Like, I personally think it's dope. But to actually, to actually like, sit in my car and listen to it or listen to it for pleasure, mm -hmm. not really. So what do you listen to for, for pleasure? Um, Well, what I was saying at the beginning is, like, rap music has hit an interesting place because... Um, we're at a moment in time where you, where we're getting really super high quality stuff and really super bad stuff because the handcuffs are off. These guys don't have A and R's and record companies or anything, so you're getting like exactly what they think unfiltered. Mm -hmm. And the guys who are really talented and 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 can really um, create art and music, they can do it at such a high level, and they don't have to filter themselves through like and A&R, and then the head of A&R, then marketing, then advertising, then promotion, right. and the head of the record company, and hope that, you know, Susie Johnson down the hall, who's an intern, likes it as well, and all these focus groups and all this bullshit. Like, <laughs> they can just make the songs they want to make and put it right out. Exactly. So so you're having, like, this weird um, sort of um, situation in the rap world where you have a ton of good music, but commercial rap is really awful. Uh, this I is the f yeah, this is the first time where like commercial rap has been like really bad, like this bad. Um, so it's a it's a great time, but you just have to find you got to find the good stuff. Mm -hmm. You you know, so that's that's kind of where where I'm at. And there there are um you know there's some some like really amazing rappers. It's, it's some of the younger guys. If they had came out like in the nineties where record companies were willing to spend a million dollars, two million dollars on uh, dude, some of these guys would be huge. Yeah. Stars. But you know, it's, it's twenty nineteen, so it is what it is. Yeah, man. It's it's just crazy the way, you know, things have changed in the last 10, 20 years, even the last like five years. Like things are just evolving and changing so fast. Everyone really has to be like on the cutting edge just to oh, keep yeah. up. It's just it's crazy. You yeah, know? For sure. Yeah. For sure. With, with metal, are you still like, you're still tracking drums and stuff like that, right? Yep. Are you using, are you replacing any of the sounds with like samples or anything or adding? Oh yeah. That, yeah. Some, it just depends on how the performance um, is recorded and how, how the artist or the performer does um, with the tracking. If, from my experience, when a drummer, when a drummer really has it together, they, you know, they're playing to the click, they're, 
they're really locked in the pocket and we get we're dialing in great tones mm -hmm. uh, to Pro Tools. Then in in more of those situations, then you don't have to use samples because everything like the drummer is hitting very hard and consistently, and um, the performance is there. Usually, when I add samples, is when uh, the hits are just aren't there, and it's like maybe a little bit weaker performance. Yeah, just to kind of beef things up. But it's always nice to be able to not have to do that. Yeah, oh, um, yeah. But at the same time, it's also it's it's useful not only just to fix a performance, but it's, it's nice, as you know, just to change the sound of the drums. Yeah, not, not, sure. Maybe not because the performance wasn't great, but just because you want a different sound. So yeah, it's it's drum replacing and sampling. Yeah, is very, um, still doing a lot of that for yeah. sure with drums. I kind of, I kind of been, I've been, um, lately I've been using a lot of live drum samples. You know, rap music is a lot of like just digital drum sounds, digital kicks and stuff like that. But the technology has given us um, opportunities to use like these great drum samples. So I've been using like a lot of live samples. Nice. And it just sounds like, to me, it just sounds amazing. Hell yeah. It'd is be it, cool to hear that because like with, the, with a nice acoustic snare, maybe blended in with like a clap yeah. or something. Oh yeah. Just to like add different textures, because you know yeah. you're used to hearing, we're used to hearing the same kind of the eight or weights, the claps, those certain snares, yeah. those those hi hats. But yeah, that's that's cool that you're adding that in there. Yeah, man. I've been thinking. The reason why I ask is, I've been thinking. Sometimes I hear Matt downstairs. I I'm like, dude. Yeah. yeah, man. You know what's funny? I heard him today, like uh, earlier, maybe three hours ago. I was, <laughs> I was working on a drums on a track and it was so bizarre because it just coincidentally his what he was playing downstairs mm -hmm. was syncing up to the song that i was doing <laughs> yeah. it was just almost perfectly in sync and then i was uh i was soloing a kick drum but i kept hearing like the room sound and like the whole kit i'm like what's going on then i i just i turned my my monitors down and it was him and i yeah. was like whoa that was because I hear them all the time, but it's never synced up perfect like that. I was freaking out for a second because I couldn't figure out where it was coming from. Yeah. But yeah. If he yeah. wasn't so damn expensive, I would give him on something. Yeah. Is he? I think I mean he's like one of the top two or three drums in the world. Yeah. Oh well yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Session I mean he does so much uh session work. He man, he uh he was on they're one of my favorite bands ever, but he was on the last um, A Perfect Circle record. He did some session drums mm -hmm. with them. So I was like, when I saw his name on there, I was like, oh shit, that's awesome. And Dude, I got his, I have his, I use his drum samples all the time. Yeah? All the time, yeah. Because Nate, Nate, he has to deal with Native Instruments. Oh, So okay. yeah, yeah, so I got his drums. I use them all the time. What, yeah. um, is that in contact or what, what yeah. is that through? Yeah, it's yeah. in contact, yeah. I didn't even know he had a... He has like his own sample pack. Mm -hmm. Oh shit! Yeah, I need to look that up. Yeah, nice. It's, yeah, it's pretty dope, man. But yeah, does he ever? Um, does it ever get distracting? Um, not really, because I'm not here at the same. Only times that we're here to at the same time is like on the weekends. But not really. I mean, and he's cool about it. If I'm just you know, like if I'm trying to cut vocals or something, most of the time I could use that little um that chaotica ball. But if it's too like, if it's too much, I could just text him. He'd be like, "Oh yeah, 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 no problem." He'd yeah. just like either go home or you know. Yeah. So let's see what else. Uh, what else is going on in the series? So you, you said you you're mainly using. You're really stoked on the the BAE 1073. Let's just talk gear Love a little that. bit. So yeah, what are you using? Um, are you still using the warm audio for compression? Or no, I actually sold that. Oh, you did? I don't have any outboard compressors anymore. Well, I guess I have the I have the um, Universal Audio 610, the MK2. Mm -hmm. That compressor is like an LA-2A, but I just don't I just don't use it. Like I, I just because everything all the compressors in the computer are so good now. Like I just don't even I don't even bother. I'm I'm more. You know, I'm more concerned about making sure I get a good signal going going into my Pro Tools. Right. And not just compressing everything after. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Do you use any of the UAD stuff? Um, I do. I use... Um, I like their, their um, 670. I use the SSL channel all the time. Nice. Because it's like an all per. You could use that on anything. Especially if I'm getting low, like... On computer power, I'll definitely start using UAD stuff then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
but I'm more of like a slate digital head. Dude. Me too. Like, yeah, me I'm too. like I'm like ninety eight percent of my stuff is slate. Yeah, me yeah. too. Uh, I was just asking about the UID because it's nice they have that feature. What's it? What's that app called where you can you can run into their app first yeah. and hit Pro Tools. So yeah. if you want, you can you can compress into Pro Tools like with their plugins. Mm -hmm. I really like that because if you don't have an outboard compressor, you just don't want to use one. You can just open up any of their digital compressors yeah. the plug in and then just use that and then it just it's nice and solid signal straight into pro tools yeah um, i got to use that a few times over at um es audio i really like that about um about the uad stuff but i guess you could do that in pro tools as well if just through an aux or something yeah i but, did i used to record like that through an aux onto the track in pro tools so i think my channel it was maybe it was maybe SSL. That's when I had that C24, that Avis C24. And they have like 16 preamps. Yeah. Those are the cleanest preamps I've ever heard in my entire life. Yeah. Like, I'm not joking. I mean, they are, there is zero color. Like, I mean, if you love the way your microphone sounds, that the the amp the the preamps on the C twenty four are what you want to use. But they're really quiet too. They're yeah. quiet. You yeah. will get one hundred percent of your microphone, no coloration from anything else. It's probably great for like VO too. Oh yeah. man, it's it's perfect. So I used to when I use that preamp on on an aux channel, I would I would put like um the SSL plug in. I think an LA two A after that, and then send it to the to the recording track. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember, I mean, I I've been using like native pro tools for the longest time and never mm -hmm. never got an hd rig but i remember like before low latency monitoring and all that and um delay compensation yeah like doing that would be impossible yeah it was oh, just yeah. there's too much way too much delay for the artist if you wanted to like go through an aux print um print compression with the plugin and then record that yeah. it was just it didn't work it, but now yeah you can do it now with like the newer pro tools um but yeah i i just like uh if I'm doing vo the only time I compress on the way in here when I'm recording here is with vocals. So mm -hmm. just have I have those DBXs. I'll just tap those a little bit and that works yeah. fine. But um, yeah, have you seen? Do you use Plugin Alliance? Any of their plugins? I don't. Um, I hear that SSL one. They have an SSL, right? They have a uh, have a bunch of stuff. But um, yeah, they have a really nice uh, bus SSL bus compressor. It's called the. Uh, townhouse which i okay. which i demoed yeah. which is great but they just like changed their whole thing and they had this like you know the the what waves is doing now like you pick a certain amount of plugins mm -hmm. and then they you it's a certain amount per month they yeah. kind of plugin alliance was doing something like that but then they discontinue it now they have the same thing as slate like a uh, set price per month for yeah. everything but they just came out with um shadow hills mastering compressor okay i plugin, saw that yeah. which is fucking great and then they also came out with um purple audio 1176 the mm -hmm. uh, purple audio mc 77 and man i was just uh i have the trials um but i was printing some room tones earlier like through that like some drum rooms and it was just like amazing so i might have to might, might be sucked into to getting those at some point but Gosh. those are that one those two are pretty pricey like the shadow hills is it's 250 yeah um but I don't know, maybe not, maybe I'll do the subscription thing, but I'm like what you said earlier about Slate, like I'm so, I'm still so happy with, with yeah. that, yeah, with the, uh, the everything bundle or whatever, yeah. they, they changed the name of it recently, but it's perfect. Fourteen ninety nine a month for yeah. everything. And I mean, yeah, like similar to you, I'm pretty much like, I would say 95, 90% of my plugins are Slate. And then I do have like a few go-to waves plugins. I just yeah. can't live without, but yeah, yeah it's so nice and what i really like about all of his plugins or most of them is like there's they load really fast and oh, yeah. they um very low cpu yeah but there is another waves i got recently called um the Sheps omni channel oh uh, the omni channel yeah oh man i've been loving that one too. really but uh yeah like i'll pop that on every once in a while but yeah still it's just that vmr is just everything you need see, most see, time. see you think like yeah. the style of music you do you use so many live instruments whereas i don't i'm sure your mixing task is way way more evolved than mine because i'm using digital samples yeah and most of the time 
I'm choosing. I like the way the samples sound already. They're processed already. Yeah, like yeah. They're, they're processed already. So really, only thing I'm doing is just like making room for stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, like panning. You know, subtractive EQ. You know, just kind of moving stuff out the way. Yep. Um, I, I don't really have to make anything sound good because it already sounds good. Like you know, it already sounds good. So yeah. I tend to use like a lot of not a lot, but. Um, you know, I tend to move things around with like um, effects, delays, reverbs, and you know that that kind of stuff is like super important. Yeah, it's yeah. All the all the glue and the ear candy and all that. Yeah, like delays and oh yeah, verbs. Um, what about? I love Fab Filter. I was just gonna ask you that Pro Q. Yeah, like perfect EQ for like you know I love the the analyzer and that's great for like pretty mm-hmm. much anything. But like I really like it for cutting things like cutting out the, yeah. the gnarly frequencies and the the filters are great yeah that's that's a great one but also the um they have some cool synths like instruments like their saturn the saturn's really good but Ooh, yeah i gotta check that out yeah man um i was gonna say oh do you like that airy cue that's in the slate bundle do i do use it? i do i use it a lot to add a touch of air just cut out some 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 low end i don't want mm-hmm. um only thing I don't really use that much of, like with the slate, I almost always use the that red compressor, whatever that red one is. Yeah, I don't, I can't remember the, the yeah. model, but I I love that one. That's my uh, yeah. favorite one on yeah. snares. Oh man, or like yeah, really. I, I use I I tend to use that, and I tend to use their SSL. I use that Neve a lot also, and that 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 silver eq that's like a combination of all of them yeah the the um that's like the master oh shit whatever the, it, yeah that like one. a mastering one kind of yeah, yeah. i like that i like that the custom i think that's what it is. Yeah. yeah i like i like those um like the hollywood like the 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 hollywood channel the and tube the, dude, i love that stuff um man i like dude i like i like slate's delays reverbs i like his mm-hmm. taping like Oh, I just tend to, I tend to use that stuff because it's super easy. Um, it all sounds really good, and then I kind of just kind of touch stuff up with the UAD stuff. Nice. Yeah, like I like the LA. Like after I get things sounding the way I want, I love to put that the 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 UAD LA two A on stuff because it 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 just has a way of just smoothing things out. It's not very fast and it's not very slow. It's yeah. just you know it it has a good way of just kind of like you know, evening stuff out and it, without taking away a lot of energy. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't like kill the energy of whatever it is I'm trying to do, which is, I love that. I love the LA 2A, like after I really get things sounding the way I want it to sound. Yeah. Do you like, um, do you like to master your own stuff or do you mainly do that? Mm-hmm. Or do you send it out or no? I send it out. I never master my own stuff. Okay. So when you're mixing, like say what you're working on now, do mm-hmm. you have any, what do you, do you use anything on your mix bus or do you just leave mm-hmm. it? And you leave it empty? What do you, what do I you use, like to do? Okay. So the first thing is this at the top is the slate. Cause you know how you have those VMR channels or whatever they're called. Yeah. Yeah. The okay. Virtual channels. Yes. So the, so the top thing is the slate right after that is the slate tape emulator tape mm-hmm. machine then right after that is that waves em- emo um mm-hmm. it's a compressor it's dope as shit like that is right after that and then that's pretty much it i like um i like the waves limiters so i use those limiters just so i can sort of see how things will sound yeah um because it's, it's generic is you know what i'm saying like i could just put it on really quickly and I can make some adjustments then before I send it off to master and I just you know I just get rid of that um but yeah the way I have my stuff set up like I have the master I have a track next to the master called everything that feeds into the master mm-hmm. and next to that I have one that, that's that's called instrumental one that's for music and then one is for kick drums and then I have the rest of my session and I have all my buses in my set. I work a lot with, with busing. Yep. Yeah. 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 I'm a, I'm a huge fan of bus. I like to, like one of my friends, he doesn't really use busing at all. But for me, busing, being able to control everything is like, it's probably left over from like when I used to mix with like these big mixers, you know, like big analog mixers. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I think that's probably, it was something I did with those mixers. 
So for, in the digital world, I haven't been really been able to like shake that habit. But, yeah, well, before, like for like the first many years of um, when I started doing this, I didn't do any groups. It was just all the tracks all going to the main output mm -hmm. and then just doing it that way. But now, yeah, I'm like, I love grouping things out. Like I have simple one is like drums, bass, guitars, the all stereo, drums, bass, guitars, synths, effects, lead vocal, backing vocal. And then sometimes I'll have all the instruments going to the bus, mm -hmm. the mix bus, and, the, and then the vocals also going, but the vocals going separately so that they're not, yeah. like the, the instruments, like all the music will be hitting a mix, um, like a mix bus compressor, but then the vocals won't, they'll have like a, their own. And then mm -hmm. all that will be going to the master so that I can kind of adjust things separately. Like, so the vocals sit over the music in a certain way. Um, but sometimes I'll just have everything going into one mix bus and hitting a compressor a certain way it just depends but yeah i love um grouping things out because you just have so much more control and then yeah. when you, if you want to print stems it's way easier it's, way it's all easier. there you just gotta you know write and print it print your groups to audio or whatever um but yeah it's there's so much more control that way and now like since pro tools has gotten so much better like with the the delay compensation and all that like I remember before when you're when we'd aux so many things and d route things differently, mm -hmm. like you just get all this delay and weird phasing shit yeah. happening. But now it's like you can. I haven't really run into an issue where I've been like, oh, I have too many, too much routing going on, and it's starting to sound weird. Yeah, you know what I mean, I, I haven't either. I think well, I've had H HD for like seven or eight years. Yeah. So it hasn't really been before that. I feel like I used to have more problems with it. Mm -hmm. Um, but now like the computers and stuff are so fast and powerful. Yep. It's just not really an issue. I, I mean, every now and again, like the other day I had a, every once in a while I get these sessions and they mostly come from like record companies, like big, large record companies. I got a session and it was like 115 tracks. Yeah. It's just like nonsense, dude. I was like, man like edit this thing down and then sent, so i sent it back for them to edit it down and when they sent it back to me it was still like 58 tracks okay yeah <laughs> yeah i mean that's another thing that's like people you know depending on the engineer um but it's like people just love to spread things out because we have all these options to to have you know fuck load of tracks so i think some people get a little bit lazy and just fucking put shit on oh, i'll just make another track and then just let and yeah instead of like comping everything and like making it neat it does take a while to do it but i mean it looks it's so much neater when you get it but yeah that's a lot of um when i when i have to mix for other clients or for for um other bands and you know they they've retracted somewhere else um and i get the session but yeah it gets over 100 sometimes 150 and That's just crazy. everything's all spread out and it's easily could be 48 yeah if you just comp things and put things where they need to be yeah so i have bef i have two days like for a mix like the first day is just preparing it because mm -hmm. most of the time it's when I get it, it's just completely unorganized. And a lot of the times the tracks aren't labeled. So I have to sit there and oh, go through okay. and be like, okay, what is this? What is this? And just figure out what everything is first. So then, he, then listen to it. Then, you know, comp things or whatever, and just get it down to a manageable uh, session so yeah. that you can actually mix it. But yeah, um, it's frustrating. Man, rap music should not be more than like 24 tracks for real. I yeah, mean, but uh, yeah, on, I mean, understand like vocally, if you know they're doing lots of layers and harmonies, and yeah, maybe you know, in a huge uh, production, you could have hundreds of vocal tracks, but that you you could comp those down, you could stem those down for the mixer. Like, you, like we don't yeah. need to, we don't need like twenty four tracks of harmony or, or uh, yeah. like doubles, doubles and doubles and triples yeah. and harmonies and whatever, however many layers they want to do. It's like, I think it's cool when, you know, when they put in that production value to make it sound huge, but it's be nice if they sent it just kind of, you know, grouped together more so we don't have to sit, sit there and go through. Cause anyway, those would all be bust to a group, like different groups. Oh um, yeah. Anyway, cause like we're going to sit there and treat each track 
individually like that if they're just no. doubles or triples or har- you know it's like no. yeah harmonies you treat differently but i don't know it's just uh yeah it, it gets it gets overwhelming before you even start to mix sometimes it's like wow i'm gonna have to sit here all day and just prepare this Dude, you I, know? I totally have a spec sheet yeah yeah and i'm like i send it off anything over 48 tracks like i charge extra <laughs> yeah seriously and i'm yeah, like that's it you know I, i'm like comp this stuff down you know and and the urban and urban music people use auto-tune a lot like i'm not gonna auto-tune your shit like send it auto-tune however you want it to sound i don't know how you want your auto-tune to be yeah you know what i'm saying exactly. so so send it so send the thing to me already tuned um cop your own stuff like i just i just want a nice tight session exactly that's it like yeah. you know i don't want so anyway but i tend to find like if i do like a like a bigger record or a record from a bigger record company that's when i see a lot of that kind of stuff mm-hmm. if it's some dude that's just like recording in his home studio or whatever they are much more concise you know I think as sometimes a regular company, these guys are like, hey, we're just going to do it. Yeah, so let's do this. Okay, yeah, let's take another. You know, and they just end up with, like, all the all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, just, like, especially with vocals. Just like, oh, let's just do another one. Keep that one. Keep every one. And mm-hmm. it's like they don't make playlists. They'll just, like, duplicate the track and do another one. Duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. It, and it's just, yeah, yeah, it can get Yeah, it can definitely get annoying, for sure. But, um, yeah, I like that you... Um, you have a spec sheet and so people know like before they send you their session like how to prepare it um, yeah heck yeah, yeah. I, I stole it i stole it from abbey road yeah actually <laughs> on their website because they do like online mixing now and i saw the way that they have it like how you have to send your sessions to them i just copy and paste it damn i need to look at it <laughs> yeah, yeah i like that though but I, i've thought about doing that for a while i had for a little bit like i would you know when i was inquiring with someone like in, i would try to explain how you know, the session needs to be prepped. But I realized that after, even after doing that with many times with different, different clients, like they still don't, they'll still send it how they want to send it. So it's like, God damn. Um, but yeah, I like that you, that you have that on your site. Oh, heck Um, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah. So it's a a requirement. I don't have all day for that. I do a whole bunch of other junk besides Mm -hmm. music. And I don't have all day for this kind of stuff. Like, you know, this should like make it easy on me. And I'll get your stuff back to you very soon. Yep. I'll get you your mix real soon. Yeah. You know, if you, if you just make it easy. Who do you, um, we talked about this before a while ago. Who do you like to use for mastering? I use, um, I use, um, gosh. Well, lately I've been trying um, ARIA mastering. That that online masters you just upload it and like they send it back to you in like ninety seconds. Mm-hmm. I like that. Like that works well for if I'm sending out beats or something like that because I just need it to sound good. Um, and it does it does sound like like pretty good. Um, the other mastering guy that I use and I don't know why I'm drawing a blank. He is in Tennessee. Sage Audio. Yes, I use Sage. And I've been using one other one, and I'm drawing a Blake on him also. Um, I just did this Sons of Man. Sons of Man is a rap group. It's one of those Wu Tang rap groups, and um, I just did. I did about half of their album. I think I did. I think I did. Five, I know I did five. I don't know if six of my songs made it, but I did five. And their deal is through Cleopatra and they used, uh, gosh, we ended up using Sage for them. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We ended up using Sage for those guys. Um, but you know, with mastering, I, yeah, I, I'm just not good at it. It's a whole different yeah. thing. It's a whole different, uh, just a whole different skill set, really. Like I've had to, I've had to start to, um, master a lot of my own stuff just because of budget mm-hmm. reasons but yeah. um in metal there's like there's like a top down mastering technique it just completely it creates a situation where you you can mix into your into your mastering chain so that you're basically so you get it to the point where it sounds greater than you do some fine tuning but if you were to take 
all that processing off the master yeah the mix would be just all over the place to be like transients popping on everywhere but it's uh that's kind of more of a, a metal technique i guess i don't know if people are doing it in um, other genres but um yeah, I've had to master a lot of my own uh, projects. I'm, I'm going to find this mastering Channel Fuse. Okay. Channel Fuse Media. Okay. They are the cheapest. Um, it's a human being that does the mastering, so it's not a, <laughs> it's not a computer. It's not an algorithm. No, he, he does a good job, a super good job, but because he is cheap, it can take a long time. When I say long time, I'm talking like, maybe five or six days to get your project back. Mm. You know, it's too long. Yeah. It's a very, but you know, like I said, he'll, he'll, he'll master a whole album for like 90 bucks, mm -hmm. 80, 90 bucks. And it's, it's a good master. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a very good master. And the guy works really hard. And, but you know, again, because it's so cheap, he's just like, kind of like busy. Yeah. Wow. That's very cheap. Yeah. So you, yeah, <laughs> I wonder I mean, how he, I wonder how he makes that work. I think he just, I think he, I think that's all he does is just master all day long. Like nothing. I think from the time he gets up to the time he goes to bed, it's just like mastering. What's it called again? Um, Channel Fuse Media. Hold on. Channel. Fuse. Yeah, dude. They, he sends me coupons like, like all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Channel, Channel Fuse Media. That guy right there, man. 25. Wow. Yeah. You know? And it's, I mean, dude, it's legit. It's legit mastering. Wow. Yep, like a full a full album for a uh, for two hundred dollars, but then he sent I, I have like a emails full of like forty percent off coupons that he sends me. Wow. Yeah. All right, well, check it out. Check out his check out the samples on there. Yeah, man. Check check them out one day. But you know, I like say I like Sage too. Sage is like my yeah. Joint. yeah. I've used I've used um the the owner Steve. Mm -hmm. I've used him on a few quite a few projects. But um yeah, I, I like to work with uh, my buddy Mike Wells, I uh, just we, the podcast I did recently was with him, um, mm. but yeah, he does. Uh, he's doing this technique called stem mastering. Yeah, yeah. Which, like but mastering. he's like, he gets really in depth with it. Um, just each stem like treats separately with different analog, uh, different analog chains. And yeah, uh, there's a we went deep into it on the last episode, but um, yeah, he is just like on a whole nother level with that shit. He's amazing. I've used him on quite a bit of stuff in the past uh, three years-ish. Yeah. But, um, but yeah. Um, I know Fernando down the hall, he does STEM mastering also. Oh, yeah? Yeah. He said he said it's like a really, you know, involved process, but the end result is like so much better. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because it's like you can get things much more impactful and, and punchy and less more open sounding and like less uh less um brick wall sounding yeah like less squashed yeah because like having that ability to tweak each stem and then and then control those stems going into the the master stem of everything and then it's it makes sense it's just there's it seems like there there's some people that aren't or some mixers producers that just aren't into it because it's like to them it's like you're changing their mix you yeah, know what I mean, yeah, which I guess in a way it is, but um, anyway, if you, I'll send you the link to uh, Mike Wells, the episode we did, but yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah, if you, want to, if you want to listen to it like when you're driving or something one day, but yeah, I don't know. I'm just trying to focus on the the recording and production and and mixing and you know, I'll I'll master if I have to, but yeah, I, I always you know let my clients know. Let's uh let's have a set aside yeah. a budget for the mastering. Yeah, okay, yeah. but um. I, you know. I mean, I've certainly like, you know, clients have asked me to mix and master. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just tell them like, listen, I don't master, but I'll send your master. You know, just pay me for it. I'll send your master with the channel fuse or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and now, you know, they'll 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 master it. So, cause man, my masters are like, I mean, they're not bad. They're just really average, to be honest. I, I mean, it's it's not like. It's not like they sound awful, but I just don't have, I just can't get a professional result. In my mind, I can't get a professional result because when I compare what I do, like if I master something, I send the same song off to an actual mastering engineer and I get them back, there's way better than mine. What are you mainly noticing that's different? For rap music, what I'm noticing is like the loudness of it. Um, 
the loud for one, their sounds louder. Even if when I look at it on the on the meters, dude, the RMS the RMS is like the same. Mm-hmm. So it's <laughs> so, like the perceived loudness. Yeah, 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 the perceived. So so I'm not exactly sure what they're doing, but like if I take their master compared to mine, their master sounds better. If I take their master and compare it to like uh, in, like a Dr. Dre master, it's it's on that level. So nice. I know so I know that they're doing something that I'm not. I'm basically just making it loud, yeah. where they're actually like mastering it and making it sound professional. Right. Yeah. So those so those are the things that I notice. That's why I don't. That's why I don't master. It's just a it's just a different discipline. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It is fun though. I'm. I like to. Uh, every once in a while, I don't know why, but like people will hit me up to just strictly master something, and I'm like, okay, and uh, it's fun. You know, I really like the process. It's just, um, yeah, I don't use any analog gear so i let them know yeah everything is it's all in the box just so you know yeah like, okay but um oh, yeah. yeah i uh i enjoy doing it but i i do i do like um recording and producing and mixing that's like my favorite i'd say probably if i had to choose one it would be mixing but i do really, really? like i really like the process of mastering really? only only if you yeah if if i get if the mix is really good already then it's just like it's so much fun yeah just to like polish it up yeah um, but uh, yeah, what about you? What's your favorite process? I, I like I like producing. I actually don't. I'm not okay. So I'm not a master. You know, I don't like the master. Um, mixing is cool if I'm in the mood to mix. But at the end of the day, I'm mostly a producer. I like to make music. I mean, that's that's pretty. I don't even like to record vocal. Like that's the reason why I don't have my studio open to the public because I just can't stand to listen to just horrible rappers like f- for hours on end <laughs> like i only deal with professional rap like my sessions uh, are super short because when i'm dealing with professional rappers like we're done in like 45 minutes yeah for real like mm-hmm. is they come in they perform the song they do what they have to do and they're like okay see ya yeah, that's when you know, because that's the same experience I've had, man, is like when you're with the, the A-game artists, it's mm-hmm. like they're at the same thing. Like they don't they don't want to waste time. It's not that they don't love it and they're not passionate, but it's like don't want to just sit in the studio and, and have a party yeah. and mess around and fuck oh, yeah. off and, 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 you know, record for like 20 minutes, then fuck off for an hour and then and get, you know, whatever. But yeah, like that's the same thing. Like when you're working with people that are really serious and the longest session I've had vocally with like a great artist is like two hours for like a couple songs. Sa- it's like, same that's, here. that's what it, I love it. Cause yeah. you know, and then you get burned out after, after like, I don't know, three or four hours just doing vocals. It's yeah. like, it gets a little, especially if it's just one song, it's mm-hmm. just like, you know, I get mentally just kind of burnt out. It's like, I need to do something else or it's like, you don't need to be spending all day on one song, you know, yeah. especially if it's just like a simple pop rap, R and B metal, whatever. It doesn't need to, if it, if it has to take 10, 12 hours, it's like, come on. And plus the, the vocalist is going to get fried. Yeah. And, and the performance anyway. is going to be good. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it's this rapper named Karis one. Uh, we were working for about two weeks at my studio, you know, right next door. And he is like, you know, top of the line kind of rapper. Um, and he was coming in like he was like he would book like a four hour session, but really, I mean, he's finishing songs in like twenty minutes, <laughs> like yeah. like it was super quick. Most of the time, we just spent talking about shit because he was like, "Yo, you know, like we just have a conversation, talk, crack jokes, like talk about yeah. stuff," and then he'd be like, "All right, I'm gonna go perform." Like literally, like a couple takes. All right, perfect. Uh, I mean, those are those are the kind of sessions that I'm that I'm into because yeah. at the end of the day, I'm more of a producer than like a studio engineer. So I just like to make music. Like, yeah, absolutely. And it, for me, that those are the greatest sessions as well, is because it's you, you're getting a great artist, a great performance, you're having a great conversation. Oh, it's yeah. not like such. It's not such. Uh, there's not so much pressure, and it's like you're having fun. That's yeah. the whole point of it. You know, yeah. it's to you're, you know, yeah, you want to be professional and get the job done and do it the best you can but it's also about you know enjoying it you know and yeah like having a good conversation and connecting with the artist so yeah dude those absolutely. those long studio days because i do remember like my first 
my first sort of like like my early studio training or just studio learning or whatever you want to call it was like um you know with four track tapes like in the nineties and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. First time I went to a professional studio like a legit studio was around nineteen ninety nine. And those when that is when studio sessions were long, because there was really not a lot of computer work. Like guys used to bring in NPCs and stuff like that. When you track out the kick drum, if the song is four minutes, you got to track out four. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. like to print everything. Uh, yeah, track. yeah, yeah. You got to print everything. Like I, I remember, like those were literally ten hour days. Yeah. Like I, I remember those days. And I never want to return to those because <laughs> back then you couldn't even like really eat. The technology was there, I guess, but you had to give people CDs on. You had to give people music on CDs. So a lot of times guys, if you hadn't seen the artist, but he knows that he wants to work with you, he doesn't have a CD of your music. So when he gets there, he would listen to all the beats that you have yeah. and pick out the one that he yeah. wants to write. So yeah. then after he picks out then you have to, and of course he hasn't written the song yet because he hasn't actually heard the music. So you have to spend the time to track it out, spend the time for him to write it. And of course, once he writes it, it starts to, the performance is all long. I mean, those were 10, 12. And when people say like, oh yeah, I was in the studio till like five in the morning. That That's what, what that was those days. Yeah, it reminds you of that. Yeah, that's yeah. Brutal. It's brutal. Oh, it's, it's, it's <laughs> awful. I love it so much now. Like I can email a beat to somebody and... Like two weeks later, they'll be like, okay, okay, I'm ready to record. They've already written it, rehearsed it. Yeah. Yeah. They come through and knock it out for sure. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So your studio isn't open to the public, but if someone wants to hit you up to hire you to mix Mm -hmm. and mix a track, you're available for that. Are you available for that now? Or are you just kind of taking a break from from that and working on your own stuff? Well, this is the thing. I'm pretty much available for anything depending on who the artist is. Okay. So my studio is not open, but my website, Boom Bad Recording Studio, is still uh, is still in the in on the internet. Yeah, I was checking it out earlier. Yeah, yeah, it looks great. It's yeah, very so, so pe- streamlined. Yeah, so people find me there. I get hit up pretty much like every day. Um, I get an email every day about sessions, and I'll listen to the artist, and then I'll decide whether or not I want to have that person book. So, cause you know, 90% of it are people just trying to, to, you know, they're just starting and I'm, and I'm very honest with these people. And I tell them, listen, I don't want you to waste your money booking studio sessions. You're, you're not really ready for it yet. And of course, some people get offended, but I'm like, bro, listen, I'm trying to help you save money. So just get better. And when, when you get better, then you'll be, cause some people just want the studio experience. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to give them a studio experience because I'm 44 and I've done studio stuff for such a long time. I'm into efficiency. Right. Yeah. You, you know, like that's my, that's my thing. So, you know, I'm just honest with them. Some people are receptive. Some people are not, but I do listen to, to artist music when they email me, like to book studio time. I take a listen if I like it and I think they're good. Then I'm like, okay, what's up? Nice. Sometimes. Yeah. I haven't I haven't had a paid session from someone who who isn't already an established artist since like since since probably like sometime in 2018. Okay. Wow. Maybe even 2017. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's it's been it's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just like you said. It's about you know we don't want to we don't want to waste their time. We don't want to waste our time. It's yeah. just about you know having the the best session experience yeah. possible and just working with, you know, people who are serious and, uh, you know, something that you're happy to work on. That's, the, yeah. that's what I struggle with. And like in the beginning, you know, of my career, I had to, I was just excited to, to get work. So I would yeah. work on anything pretty oh, much, yeah. almost oh, yeah. anything. Same and here, now yeah. it's like, I'm, it's nice to, I'm, I'm at the point where I can, you know, if, I don't turn down that much, but when mm-hmm. I do, sometimes I do it. It's nice just to be able to be like, oh yeah, I don't think we're a good fit, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's the truth. Like I told you earlier, like I don't like mumble rap and stuff like that. So I'm not going <laughs> to record a mumble rapper, but the guy in the studio next door to me, he does like mumble rap. So I referred them to him. Exactly. Yeah. You, you know what I'm Perfect. saying? I'm like, this is a better engineer for you. Like he likes his music. He understands a little better. And he'll be able to help you get the best version of whatever it is you're trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. So I tend to do 
stuff like that. Um, but, the, you know, the studio game is so different now because I guess if you back in the days when studio sessions were like 10 or 12 hour sessions, then it makes more sense to even work with someone that's not that great because you're going to make more money. But the fact that now, at least in my experience, now sessions are only a couple hours because things are just so much easier. I don't even want to spend a couple because it's not that much money. It's not, you know, right. it's, like, it's like a waste of my time. So in that case, I would rather mix a record because I get paid a flat fee no matter if it takes me three hours or however many hours it takes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a flat fee. I don't mind it. This is how much I charge to mix a record. Send me the stuff. Like, I'm more willing to do that. Yeah. 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 If anyone wants to hit you up for a mix, they can go to uh, your website, boombatrecording.com. Yeah. 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 Boom, boom, bad recording studio dot com. OK. Or just uh, just find me, man. Yeah. That's what I always say. Just find me. And what's your uh, what's your Instagram? DJ B original. Are you still doing a lot of DJ gigs? Yes. Yeah. All the time. And all the time. I'm sure you meet a lot of uh, artists that way. Like, I meet a ton yeah. of artists that way. Yeah. When I was really when I was down the hall and when my studio was down the hall, um, and I was really trying to like bring in money and stuff like that. The fact that I was DJing was helping me so, cause there's so many openers, so many openers. Yeah. Like every time I would DJ um, a concert, it would be like five open. That's like five cl clients. And I was, and I was doing this like three or four days a week. I mean, I had clients coming out of my ear. Like that's when I was really, really, really like, I'm um, just struggling like everybody else to really just like get things going and, you know, in, in my studio. So, yeah, I was back then I was like, let's go. Nice. Yeah. Every opener I met, y'all got a recording studio. You need to record. Y'all got a recording studio. <laughs> you need to record. Yeah, man. Just yeah. just over and over again. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. Well, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad we've been neighbors for a while. And uh, it's, yeah. it's it's cool to. uh it's cool to just have, I love the vibe of this building and just have everybody, uh, everyone's doing their own thing, but at the same time, it's like, we're all kind of looking out for each other. So, uh, it's, it's been, it's been great. Uh, yeah, for sure. Having, you know, it's a great spot. I'm probably going to be here for a while. So yeah, same yeah. here. I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm here. I certainly have thought about leaving, but I would only do it if I bought a building. You know, it'd be tough to go somewhere and lease because the way things are set up here, it's just, it's hard to duplicate what we have in this building. You know, it's it's almost impossible. Like, you know, I'm sure you've been in other places and I've been in other places and it's just difficult to have like, um, you know, a setup where people are pretty chill with one another. And you tell someone to turn down, they'll turn down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, people aren't hanging all out in the halls and shit like that. It's parking. Yeah. Like that is unheard of. Yeah. <laughs> that somebody could park somewhere, you know? Yeah. We have a very convenient parking arrangement. That's yeah. For sure. Sometimes it gets a little crazy, but yeah, most of the time it's, it's yeah. just, yeah. Don't have to worry about, you know, clients struggling to park and mm -hmm. all that. So yeah, it's nice. And, and for me, for, for what I do, it's cool to just have, um, you know, professional musicians hanging around. Exactly. Like, you know, if, yeah. I, if I really needed some guitar, I know I could hit you up like, yo, come over and hit me with some guitar. The guys yeah. across the hall with keys and stuff like, you know, for me, because I don't actually physically play any instruments. It's all like computer based stuff. Mm -hmm. And when I do need like a live bass player, it's cool. I could just like knock on Nathan's door or whatever. Yep. Like, yo, I need a bass player. Like, can you help me out? Yeah. Yeah, man. Well. Thanks for coming in and uh, hey, I appreciate and it. being on the podcast. So yeah, one more time for everybody. If they want to hire you to, to mix, they can go to boombaprecordingstudios.com. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, hit me, find me on Instagram um, at DJ Be Original. Uh, you know, just, uh, you know, I'm around. I'm around. Nice. I'm around. I'm all over. Awesome. Thank you, Benny. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Peace, peace, peace.